Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you five ways that I organize and categorize my tasks to help me get the right things done at the right time. And hopefully these small little hacks will help you. Hey, I'm Ev and I create YouTube videos about how to level up your life and work using Tools for Thought. And in today's video, I thought I would share five of my best strategies, these little mini things that I do to help me categorize and organize my work so I'm working on the right things at the right time and getting as much as I can done um, that I need to get done every day. So I have been studying how to get more things done for a lot of years now, ever since I kind of read uh, David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, and I started using the GTD method, and then I started, you know, just wanting to know how to be more productive every day. And I've gone through all the peaks and, and the valleys in that. I've gone through, you know, wanting to fit all of the things in and be super productive and all of that to really now realizing that uh, you have to get the right things done every day and you have to do it in a way that's sustainable and that works for you and that you still have a life at the end of the day. So what I find is that, you know, not every task is created equal. And a lot of the times we think ta we think all of our tasks are equal, but actually we need to think through them in different ways. So a lot of these different strategies are just ways of recognizing what kind of tasks belong in what kind of buckets or energy levels or, the, you know, when we have to do them or, you know, where they fit in a process. And once we understand that, it's actually much easier to find flow in our work. So let's get into it. Five different ways on how I categorize and organize how I get things done every day. So number one is a thing that I call hill charts. Well, actually, I don't call it hill charts. I discovered this from Basecamp. So if you use the, the tool Basecamp, they have this thing called hill charts. And what basically it is, is that if you think about every project or even every task, Every project has this uh, mode or this part of the project where you feel like you're kind of working it out, right? You're working out how, you know, what does this look like? How do we get this done? Um, and so it feels like you're going uphill. And so you kind of got this whole lot of a project that's going uphill, which is working things out. And then once you get to the top of that and you've worked out, oh, this is how we're doing the project, then you uh, get into this other mode, which is like getting it done. and. Often the uphill part of a project feels much harder. It feels like it's a longer process. And, and so sometimes there's some expectations around, you know, well, why is this project taking so long? But actually once you get to the top of that and you get into the downhill part, it goes really fast and you just know exactly what you have to do when you're on your way down. So what I do with projects is I divide them and I just have a one simple field um, in my Tana project which is called the hill chart and it has either up an up arrow or a down arrow and so each week i can kind of go in there and i can just um kind of remind myself okay i'm still in working out mode um so i need to probably put some more headspace in there i probably need um to create a little bit more time and a little bit more space to get that done and then once i get into the downhill mode where i'm like oh got it it's like a breakthrough moment that you get um, and then you're like, okay, downhill, and usually projects pretty much wrap up, you know, quickly, or they feel like they're, they've got much more momentum in that. So the second strategy that I use is something that I call the activation sequence. Now, if you think about it, the starting of every task or every project is always the hardest part, okay? And it's due to kind of this whole idea of activation energy. Whenever you start something new, it always takes longer to start it than it is does to actually do things it's really why we end up procrastinating on so many different things right because by the time we actually get into it and convince ourselves that we should be doing this it was easier than we thought it was okay so i kind of had this whole idea of an activation sequence so i asked myself what is it that i need to get started on this thing so often we'll have like a task like i need to um record this youtube video for instance okay well actually like sometimes the procrastination on that is like once i get started and recording and doing all of it i'm in the mode but it's the starting of it that is really hard so what is the first thing that i need to do in order to get that task done so that actually might be as simple as opening up the script 
um, or, you know, it, it could be anything, but actually it's sometimes even just the smallest thing that we just need the activation energy on. That is, it's easy to do. Um, it, and a lot of the time for me, it just requires just open it up and have a look at it. And by the time I do that, I'm in the moment, I'm like, oh yeah, it's that idea. And you know, I'm ready to go. But often, often we don't do that. And it's a big, um, it's a big shift because not only think it's just the smallest thing. Like, why would I even remind myself to just open up the script or to just, you know, grab that doc or to, you know, start here or to do whatever that thing that is the most logical first step to do in completing that task. But if you take the time to actually plan out that, what that activation sequence looks like, you will find yourself getting to flow so much faster and you'll find yourself um, having less procrastination in, uh, in the whole process. And it will be just a beautiful moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't actually procrastinate and that I got it done. And so all I do is I keep a really simple field in my Tata that's called activation sequence and it says, what is the first thing that you need to do on this task? And I put that in and usually what I do is either at the beginning of the week when I'm planning my tasks, I'll just go through quickly and I'll just write a whole heap of stuff that I need to do first. Um, or I might do that at the beginning of the day. And so what that means is, and you know, there's two, and I might do another video on this. And if you, if you find this, this whole concept helpful, I might kind of, uh, just, just comment below and let me know, but there's two modes that you should be in. There's this planning mode and then there's this presence mode. So when you're in your planning mode, that's when you're planning all the things that you need to do today and this week and all of that. Well, once you get into your day, you should be fully present and should have everything that you need. And so this activation sequence really helps me to kind of be in those two modes, be in planning mode when I need to, and then presence mode and really get into flow and get things done. So the third strategy that I use to get more things done is what I call cycles. Okay, so what, how this came about is that I have been notorious for scheduling too many tasks in my day, I'm sure we all have. Um, and so what I needed was a way to kind of visually see how much do I have in my day? How much is this gonna take up in my day? Um, and I wanted to really work at being realistic at the workload I gave myself. So I started to break things down into 30 minute cycles. Okay, so um, I would say, okay, well, this particular task, doing YouTube videos or, you know, whatever it was, that's going to take me 30 minutes or that's going to take me an hour. And so I basically have one, two or three cycle tasks. So one cycle task take me 30 minutes, two cycle tasks take me 60, three, three cycle tasks take me 90 minutes. Um, and so each task that I have gets a cycle assigned and I just have a field that has either one circle, two circle, or three circles in Tana. And then I just, usually what I do at the beginning of the week, I will kind of map out what tasks I'm doing on what days, and then how many cycles will that take. And I just have a rule that I can't do more than about six to eight cycles in a day. Usually it sits at six. It doesn't, uh, whenever I schedule eight, I never get all my stuff done. But if I schedule six, I know I'm getting all of that done. And then everything else is kind of like little, like that you can bolt together. Like, you know, if something can take five minutes or that kind of thing, I usually just have a 30 minute cycle, either at the end of the day or the beginning of the day where I can bulk a whole lot of things I know are just gonna take a little bit of time and I can bulk them together. This has really helped me to be realistic with what I can get done in the day, but also just to know like some tasks are gonna take longer, some, some tasks are gonna, are gonna be shorter and knowing, you know, okay, I'm not really in the mood to a 90 minute, you know, cycle right now. I need to choose a 30 minute cycle. So this has been really helpful just to be able to um, schedule things in my day and not over schedule myself. So the fourth strategy that I use is something called focus drivers. And this is fairly new to my system. So my friend, David Meyer, um, kind of came up with this system uh, and, uh, and I kind of found it through him on Twitter. And basically there's four different modes of working. And I love this concept of modes of working because like I said at the beginning of this video, often we just view all tasks as level, but actually they're not. So many tasks require different modes, different types of thinking, different types of working, different types of energy. And so um, the way that he explains this is so cool. So he has four mo main modes of working. The first one is park, okay? So like that's when you just need a mental break. Like you just need some time out 
you can't get anything done. The second one is off-road. So this is when you need kind of that creative space for work and experimentation. If you think back to kind of my my hill chart um, uh, strategy, it's kind of like when you're going uphill, you need that time, you need that focus, you need space to like make things happen. So if you think about off-road, it's like, we're just gonna go and like get messy and, and that kind of thing. And I just love kind of the analogies of these focus modes because they really help my visual brain to kind of you know, understand what I'm doing in that time. The third mode is what we call sports mode or what he calls sports mode, which is like focus. Like you've got a clearly defined task, you know how you're gonna get it done and you're just sitting down and you're getting in and you're doing it. That's like, you know, if you're thinking about like deep work and focus time, that's like your sports mode. And then number four is eco mode, which is like low energy tasks, like things that you can bolt together. They don't need much headspace from you. You can just kind of like, you know, if it's data entry or if it's stuff like this. And I am loving these kind of four different modes for like, just thinking about like, you know, well, how am I feeling right now? Like, do I need some park time? Is it time for off-road sports or eco? And then I can match that up with tasks that kind of, you know, uh, are of the same uh, of the same category. And I'm finding this really helpful. And just, you know, even though I have other different ways of categorizing tasks, I'm finding this so helpful to be able to um, just visualize some of the different tasks and like visualize off-road or visualize sports. Like when I'm visualizing sports, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm like on the highway and I'm about to go a hundred miles an hour and just like go, 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 tick, tick, tick. Um, but sometimes off-road is more like, okay, I just need space and time to think about things. I don't have anything that's like, you know, clearly defined yet. And so it's just such a great way of thinking about tasks. If you want to know more about focus um, modes, please, I will put the link below um, that, so you can go and discover Dave and, um, and, and how he works. I would 100% uh, go follow him and follow what he's doing. I am so into it right now. And then my fifth strategy is actually something that I just call focus days. So um, a couple of years ago working, um, I was kind of, I felt really scattered and I was doing coaching calls and then I was doing this and I was jumping into other things. And I just thought, well, that's just the way I work. I'm happy to kind of do lots of things on different days. But um, what I did was work with a colleague at the time and he said, look, why don't you just choose different things to do on different days? And it actually really changed how I work. So that's why, you know, I, I know that for me every Wednesday, that's a coaching day for me. I don't do anything else. I only do coaching calls and I just do them back to back to back to back. But then I know that on other days of the week, I don't have to worry about coaching. I can do other kinds of things. And so I kind of set a whole lot of different focuses for each day. So for me now, Mondays are my content day. So I don't have to worry about when am I scheduling content? When am I going to do that? I know it's going to be done on Monday. Um, I know that uh, Thursday and Friday for me, um, in my full-time role, uh, my what I call acquisition day. So I'm working on my on Facebook ads. I'm working on how we're getting leads in to the company, all of that kind of thing. And then there's all sorts of other different days. And so what this does for me is it eliminates every uh, decision that I have to make on when should I do this task. I know that I can then just say, well, if that is a content task, I do it then. If that's a coaching task, if that's a this task, if that's a that task. I can put it on those days and I don't have to then make another decision about well, what day should I do this? Um, and so focus days really do help me to kind of like just get my week planned super fast. And then obviously if there's like, if I need to kind of flex and that kind of thing, I can do that as well. But it helps to take those initial decisions away. So I hope you like this video on how I kind of plan and categorize my tasks and think about them in different ways. So I'm working on exactly the thing that I need to at exactly the right time, not burning out, not scheduling too much in. And these are all the ways that I can kind of get all the work that I have to do done um, and still go and enjoy my life and enjoy kind of sunny days and doing whatever I want. So if you liked this video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and you subscribe to the channel because I create videos like this every week on how to level up your life and work um, using strategies and tools like this.